My wife and I split most household chores 50-50, but I'm self-aware enough to recognise that she's simply better than me at most of them. I cook three to four days a week, but she always cooks tastier food. I'm a bit of a cleaning freak, but she always somehow leaves the apartment looking nicer and tidier. I'd consider myself good at organisation, but she does a much better job of keeping our collective schedule. Yet despite her having what economists might describe as an absolute advantage in all these tasks, nobody would suggest she should do all of them alone. So how could we organise ourselves so that we are better off collectively in terms of how we use our time? Well, the answer is a widely misunderstood theory called comparative advantage, and it helps explain why being able to trade freely is so valuable. So let's suppose we're having a dinner party as a family and have an hour to get ready. There's two major tasks that need doing, cooking the meal and preparing the apartment. Now if my wife was better at cooking and I was better at cleaning, it would be obvious who should do what. She should cook, I should clean. But my wife is better at both. So in that case, in deciding who should do what, we need to find out who has a comparative advantage in each task. That basically means comparing our opportunity costs, working out who would have to give up most in being assigned to a particular role. Now it so happens in this case that my wife is a much, much better cook than I am. Compared to me, she's a regular Martha Stewart. Yet when it comes to cleaning, sure, she still does a better job than me, but probably not that much better. The guests probably wouldn't even notice the difference. So in this instance, if she cleaned and I cooked, we'd therefore sacrifice a lot. We'd move from a great meal to a tasteless one but we wouldn't actually gain that much in terms of a nicer environment from her cleaning rather than me. In other words, me cooking is relatively much more costly to us than her cooking. So it makes sense for her to cook and for me to clean because that way we can use our hour best in terms of producing a better overall experience for our guests. So the key insight here is that we can raise our overall production by having people, or indeed in some cases countries, specialising in activities in which they have that comparative advantage. That is activities that they have to give up relatively less to produce something than somebody else. And that simple idea is very powerful because everyone has a comparative advantage. Even if you're pretty bad at every task, you'll be relatively less useless at some than others. And that means you'll have something to contribute through trading with somebody else. Now as it happens, neither my wife nor I do deep cleans of our apartment, because there's actually a really good local cleaning service with a comparative advantage in doing so. It makes more sense for us as a family to spend that time working or engaged in leisure activity, trading our pay for someone else to occasionally deliver that service. So why is this important from a public policy perspective? Well, the same logic applies across different countries producing millions of products. That is, we can increase global production if people, businesses and countries all specialise in what they can produce at lower opportunity costs. You may have noticed that for years a lot of call centres from American companies were actually based in India. Now that's not because India is the world's best at producing these services, or even the lowest cost. It's because citizens here were relatively much better at producing other goods and services. So it made sense to outsource this to a country with a relative opportunity cost advantage in terms of providing that service. The concept of comparative advantage, when you think about it, is therefore quite profound. It says that trade can make us better off overall, not because we learn how to do things better as we continue to engage in the activities, or even because we adopt new machines or fancy technologies. Just by rearranging who does what, we can actually produce more and so be better off as a global community overall. The more different countries' opportunity costs are, in fact, the more we have to gain by trading with them and the more we lose by imposing barriers to trade.